Or we have something, well, when you tune in with nature, I was nurtured by nature, naturally. So when you tune in with nature, you, you honed in with nature, she has something, or Mother Nature's bestowed upon us something called a circadian rhythm. Circadian gives you a clue that it's a circle. We're in a cipher for you stupid flat earthers. Uh, <laughs> Uh, circadian rhythm is like when the sun has gone down your body cannot really metabolize the nutrients you need to be getting from these foods from these natural sun fired foods when the sun has gone down your body more or less shuts down or that certain departments in your body shut down from the digestion process you know it already kicks in so eating after seven o'clock doesn't make no sense the Europeans have got a thing uh, of you know having a romantic meal out of some funky ass restaurant downtown till 12, one in the morning. But that's the antique of Rome. We are not Romans, you know? It's romantic, the antique of Rome. But then you go home, all that gas is fermenting in your, in your lower intestine, you're trying to sleep, that's crazy. Also, to tie that in, when we was younger, our folks didn't know no better neither. So they would say, yo, have your supper and go to bed. But back then, depending on your age, most of our supper consisted of what? Cookies and milk, right? Now the cookies is very acidic. The sugar in there was acidic. The milk, we can digest the milk. There's something inside the cow's milk. Cow's milk, ironically, is meant for a calf. There's something inside um, the cow's milk called oligosaccharides, which we cannot digest naturally. Hence, it's said that most people of color are lactose intolerant. Now, it's not the fact that we're intolerant to any kind of lactose, because lactose, you know, is in you anyway. Um, it's the fact that it's the lactose that's coming from the cow is secreted from the, the sexual reproduction organs of that animal. That means it's meant for any offspring of that animal. You know, we do not grow that fast. Um, we cannot grow that fast with, with the enzymes that's naturally for a cat. That's not in our genome. Some other people, yes, they can take that. We, however, cannot. Once again, it's not racist teaching. That's to do with your haplotype and your genotype. You follow what I'm saying? So milk. Cheese, we've got a big thing in, in the urban community, especially with the sisters, they're hooked on chocolate. That's style milk. They're hooked on cheese. That's even worse style milk, you follow what I'm saying? Now there's something inside the cheese in the casein that they're synthetically addicted to, whether it's casomorphine or whether it's synthetic tyrosine. Tyrosine is something we do naturally have. Tyrosine actually is the, pre, the precursor to what your folk refer to as melanin. You may some, hear some people saying, you know, melanin doesn't exist. Melanin is intelligent carbon, we are carbonites, period. That's the sixth element on the elements chart. Um, so the dairy now, I mentioned the sisters, the dairy and the sisters hair products, all these crazy ass sprays and whatnot, that's contribution to things like PCOS and you women. PCOS, I shouldn't abbreviate really. Uh, PCOS is polycystic, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And the reason I'm an advocate of not um, I'm not pushing too much abbreviations out there because we're getting knocked out on abbreviations. We like to abbreviate everything. If I say I'm flying from here back to NY, I don't say, I, I don't say NY, I say I'm flying back here to New York City. If I'm going to the left coast, I say I'm flying to Los Angeles, not LA. We've been too much, um, you know, abbreviations in the words, we, we, we lose the actual meaning. It's good to study, there's a science called etymology. We need to get it under our belt so we know what we're saying precisely. So we fit these words in and it makes sense. You ask, Half of the youth out here, or even most of the adults out here, what does DNA stand for? You know, as an acronym, they can't tell you. We got to get used to saying things like, you know, deoxyribonic nucleic acid. Say the full, the full meaning. So these things like, um, where was I? And the casein and cheese and things like that, the dairy. These poisons, these radiated blood and pus, because that's what it is, radiated blood and pus, once it's in your body, it cannot really escape naturally. So what it does is it oozes itself through your anatomy. In a woman, it goes down to a very high, uh, hot place. It migrates down around the vaginal region, the vaginal, vaginal tract, contributes, uh, as well as these hair products and the meat, it contributes to things like PCOS, which is, and fibroid complications. We gotta get our peoples off of that. It's very addictive. You'll find that it's very, very addictive. But, you know, it's our taste buds. And when I say our taste buds, we gotta learn to recalibrate our taste buds. What's bitter is better. What's sweet is no good. You follow what I'm saying? The, the sweet things, you've got eight natural sugars in life that we can get from nature. You find that in fruits and, and vegetation. And which brings on to another topic now, because people, you know, the next thing that follows after that is, yo, Brooklyn, what, you vegan, are you vegetarian? 
Me personally, I don't like falling under these these um, boxes, these words. They, they just sound too smart, you know. And sometimes we're too smart for our own good. If I turn around and say, yeah, I'm vegan, dude would be like, yo, Brooklyn, why you got suede sneakers on? Yeah, I'm vegan. Why you got leather jacket on? It gets a bit silly with the semantics and the etymology of the word. So I'm like, yo, I eat natural, yo, I eat nature foods. You follow? Uh, I, don't, I don't hardly cook things. I, I lightly steam. So I'm rehydrating the food because the, the food's got to be haste to well compatible. It's got to be like water soluble type foods, nutrients for your body, for your cells. You got to feed ourselves, you know, holistic, holistic food. So I don't eat anything with a face and an ass on it, period. I don't consume anything that came out of something that had a face or an ass on it, period. So no meat, obviously, no fish, obviously, no dairy, obviously. However, if you are a flesh eater and you're a person of color, you can't just give up like that, you know, because you've got certain acids that are going to end up breaking you down. You've got to wean up slowly. If you are a flesh eater and you want to make the transition, then obviously I would advise you to be a pescatarian. However, at the end of the day now, it's about the long game. The long game is you got to try, even if you switch to pescatarianism, that's a, uh, that's a up from, you know, dead eating, dead flesh. It's no good for you because you're alive. So if you switch to pescatarianism now, that's a step in the right direction. However, the end game of that now is that you want to find out what the fish are chasing. You want to be trying to eat what the fish are eating. I don't, I don't just mean basic mundane man, uh, plankton floating through the oceans, you know. I'm talking about those weeds, those algae, those sea moss, those seaweeds, those, you feel what I'm saying? These kelps, all these things loaded with iodine, because most of this land food, that purports to be food, we're not getting the iodine, we're not getting these fish, we're not getting the vital minerals that we need from nature. We're, we're definitely not getting nowhere near the 102, the 102, you feel what I'm saying? So, you know, with, back to these stores again, most of what they're purporting to be food is not food. Once you take it out of its original environment and you process it, that becomes a drug. So these stores should be called drug stores. You follow what I'm saying? So we got to learn to grow our own food. And that's a whole other topic. But, you know, you want to kick it, we go there. But, yeah, there's a correlation between what we're eating. You look at the youth now, they're coming out of school, right? What's the first thing they go do? They run to the Chicken Express. Sorry, the Pigeon Express store. Because, you know, you ain't seen no chicken delivery in the neighborhood. So, you know, it's pigeon and chips. And they're walking down the street, walking down the avenue, eating pigeon and chips out of a plastic box. The heat, carcinogenic. The meat, fried at over 118 degrees, carcinogenic. You follow what I'm saying? So it makes no sense. We gotta look at our eating habits. How they learn to walk and eat at the same time, I don't really get that. That's something real strange right there. You follow what I'm saying? So, you know, the eating habits, the, the eating urges is crazy. You follow what I'm saying? We, we, should be the, we should be the master scientists of ourselves. We are, we should be our own doctors, our own nurses, all of that. You know, the NHS, in its, in its initial conception, was a fantastic idea. I don't knock it. Right now, I've never known the NHS to be overstretched as it is right now. And most of the people in there could take the weight off of them by just studying their own cells, studying biology, studying their own body chemistry, what they eat, because you are what you eat, right? So, you know, why would you be a burden on a, on a system so fine? As I said, the NHS in its original conception was, was an A1 model, you know, you should count yourselves lucky, people within the UK, to have something like the NHS. Don't overstretch it. Yes. Yes. And through short of sound like some crazy conspiracy theorists, because then the next thing is like, yo, do you think the, the pharmaceuticals are on purpose? They are, however, it's their prerogative. You follow what I'm saying? And you probably won't understand that until you, until you really go on in depth into biology, astrophysics, haplotype kind of sciences to realize who's in control, who needs certain minerals and who doesn't need certain minerals, then you'll understand what I'm saying. So I'm not saying in, a, in some mystical pseudo way of saying, you know, oh yeah, just blame the pharmaceuticals. I blame you, like blame yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because it ain't all down on their hands. As I said, it's their prerogative, you know? If they own X amount of land and, and they know for a fact that most growth plantation needs, what, 60 odd, minerals for, for optimum growth and but they can get away by their own laws and regulations by just putting free basic minerals in there because they know that X amount of people on the planet um, don't need or, or only need those minerals or can get by on those minerals and the rest of them stuff them then it's there for everybody. We got to carve our own land and make sure we get the, the right minerals in that ground. For instance, um, I mentioned tyrosine earlier on uh, or even selenium, a good source of selenium is Brazil nuts. But imagine most stores on planet Earth sell you Brazil nuts, right? 
But if those Brazil nuts, if they was in the ground and the ground wasn't fertile with things like selenium in that soil around it and everything else, you know, boron, the fifth element, uh, so on and so forth, then the nut you're eating is devoid of these minerals. And that's how you should be looking at most of the foods that you think, oh yeah, get that just because it's green, but it could be devoid of the main minerals, you know, that, that are sufficient for our genetic makeup. Follow what I'm saying? So you gotta get out your way to support farmers markets. Um, sometimes you may live in a neighborhood where you have people with an allotment, support them. Because an allotment, say like this is Haringey, we're in the borough of Haringey. There's allotments up Waha Lane, Tottenham. If you eat produce from people who've grown their food in that environment, within this nine square mile radius, that somehow is gonna help your immune system also if you, if you consume food like that. You know, that hasn't been sprayed with certain chemicals and whatnot, you follow what I'm saying? Um, and you know, most allotments are protected. You get your netting, your fish netting, uh, glass greenhouses and things of that nature. Because you know, you don't want to just grow something and then before you know it, foxes are urinating over it and foxes carry X amount of diseases. With them. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take you out. So you really got to be a connoisseur at this game, but you should be anyway, right? You follow what I'm saying? You know, um, you should be questioning these things analytically. Don't just buy something because it looks fancy on the packet. You know, there's, 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 there's reports out there of, of people, certain stores selling cans of beans and things like that. And the can is actually from the Second World War. You know, they got them from these bunkers and they just, you just need a printer, a nice picture. Boom, put it on the, on the front of a can and people are buying it thinking, yeah, that looks good. By the way, we should not eat anything that's in a can. It doesn't make no sense, there's no life in it. So give up those canned sardines and all that. You dig? Now, I wouldn't know that it was cold until you told me. Now that's a saying of, um, see I was brought up in the teachers on the Wapu, Dr. Malachi Ziyok, the great. And you know, he used to remind us of certain sayings, you know, he'd be like, yo, I wouldn't know it's cold until, until a dude come and tell me. Like street vendors is older than the prostitution. We've been out here like all day, every day with tables, all, all weathers, right? But yet a dude would come off the subway chain and be like, yo, Brooklyn, it's freezing. I'm like, oh, thanks for that. Is it really, really freezing though? That's the best you could do, leave me with that? Because your words carry weight, size, credit, and, some, and valuation. So I'm thinking, I got a question mentality. Why would you say, Brooklyn, aren't you freezing? Like, I don't know how you would do it. Don't you think I make provisions to come out here? <laughs> don't you think I eat correctly? I don't really feel, the only thing I really feel is my fingers, just my fingers. They get a, a tad of frostbit. Other than that, it ain't really freezing, is it? It ain't 33 below, degrees below. You follow what I'm saying? And even if it was, they ain't really gonna kill me. So, like again, it depends on what you consume. You know what I'm saying? If, if you over wrap up, that's no good, you know? But if you know your body, if you know how your body calibrates and vibrates, because everything is energy and everything vibrates, then you will see past that. And, and actually that is matter over mind. Because people say mind over matter. But then, you know, the test was, where was your mind? You know, your mind is not in there, is it? It's a mental reservoir that we all tap in. So it's mind over matter and matter over mind. The matter, matter physics. So the more you, you, you think about it, the more you realize, yes, it can appear to be cold. However, if you make certain provisions, you survive, it ain't, it ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? If, if there's someone tells you the forecast is heavy rain, you know you're gonna come out with a rain mech, uh, a windshield or an umbrella. You, you know you're gonna make provisions. You're not gonna come out with a suede jacket on, are you? And sandals, you dig? So it's, it's, everything is about perception, you follow? Um, I don't really listen to the weatherman because the weatherman's lying since they, they never get nothing right, right? And in a place like London Town, you know, you get four seasons in one day. You dig me? But um, yeah, back to the right foods because it does tie in, it, it ties in. We are, we are of the equator, right? So that that's, should be our food base, you follow? We're of the regions, especially from the Americas, which is the Caribbean Islands, that's the Americas and the motherland, uh, Nubia, Africa, Kush, uh, Kemet, Tamare, you know, which is like 14, 10 to 14 degrees above the equator. When we're in somewhere like the UK, we're 52 degrees above the equator. So it's imperative that you go out and eat your own kind of foods. Yeah, that's a good question. It's a good question because the, the actual depression and I can actually, um, I'm a siren. Depression and so-called mental health disorders and even that, I gotta stop at this word, this mental health thing that's in the community. It's, it's, it, people say it like it's a taboo. You know, mental health. Mental health should be a good word. It means you're mentally healthy, right? 
but they've switched it like mental health is something real bad and you know and, and real mental health is down to nutrition it really is down to nutrition you know and the amount of light that's the amount of light that we receive through our eyes because you eat through your eyes really through your retina and how it passes through the brain you follow so neuroscience is is a must so yeah the, the whole depression thing because you're depressed or you're dehydrated if you're eating the foods that that as i said earlier you know we should be eating water-based foods water molecule foods um if you're eating foods that are, de are deprived of h2o of hydrogen and oxygen then you are dehydrated you follow what i'm saying so you're going to be depressed you're going to be deflated in your ideas in your in your originality, in your creativity, you follow what I'm saying? You'd be depressed. And, it's, and depression is a, it's a dark circle to fall in. And, and you know, in urban communities, the, the parody of like, if you have money to buy a decent food or not, could make a big difference, you follow what I'm saying? But then again, it's not all bad because there are things like fasting, fasting of the mind, the mentality. You know, you don't need to eat every single day. So don't go crazy because you ain't got no food on your table today. There's always tomorrow. You can go about food X amount of weeks. You follow what I'm saying? But people don't learn the art of fasting. They're told in this society, eat, 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 eat. People just eating for gluttony. That makes no sense. It's actually nasty that people eat every day. It's nasty. You gotta clean the colon. Your colons are backed up like a subway train. Sometimes you gotta clean that. And that's back down to the food again and the mentality. So if you rushing around, you're eating a fast pigeon and chips and you're walking, somebody bumps into you, boom, you got all the anger in you. Why is that? It's down to what you're eating. You follow? If you're eating wholesome food made with love and you know the ingredients and it took time, it's natural, you can be calm in your, in your, in your outlay. You follow what I'm saying? So the, the attitude thing, the mental thing goes hand in hand. Eat good food, think good, do good things. You follow what I'm saying? Eat bad food and you are what you eat, right? You know, you are what you eat. I mean, look, a lot of the so-called foods what they purport to be food out here is Frankenstein. You follow? How many people eat these things every day? See that? These average, these average looking bananas, right? Now you pay a buck on a block for a bunch of bananas. So you're thinking, yeah, go in the corner, pay a pound, get a big, nice bunch of bananas. But those big bananas you get in are going to give you more starch and more mucus than milk or dairy or meat. Why is that, Brooklyn? Because those bananas that you consume and that purported to be real bananas are actually hybrid bananas. They are Cavendish bananas. They're hybrid, they're not real. There's no potassium in there, there's no, no seeds in there. Yeah, I said it, seeds in there. You want real bananas like you got in the Caribbean islands. If you go like in Western world, you get them real little fig barrel bananas, small little things like that. Loaded with potassium, loaded with little seeds in there. Now I've had blue bananas, red bananas, purple bananas. Believe that, well don't believe that, go and check it out for yourself. So we gotta look at what we're eating. Um, the funny thing is, on a subway train on the way down here, there was an article in the paper, and it, let me see if I still got it. And it was about one of my favorite things that I consume every day, uh, avocados. Now this thing that I, I ripped out of the paper, they've got some new artificial avocado, and it's seedless. And that's crazy. You know, a seedless avocado? <laughs> Are you serious? In London, in London. Yo, in, in London. That is crazy. In London, y'all. Look at that, look at that, man. Got it right here. Look, having it, having it small. No stone. No stone in the avocado. Yo, I'm out here telling people we should consume the stone. Eat the stone, eat the pip. There's more nutritious value inside the actual seed pip stone than there is the actual fruit. We should consume the whole thing, apart from the skin, which is not really edible, you follow? But, you know, they're making a, a pipless, stoneless avocado. Stay away from that, you know? Like most of the children come out of school, they go to the store, you ask them their favorite grape, they say seedless grape. But a seedless grape, that can't be real. Seedless, that's gonna pay your genetics, you follow? Only eat fruit with a seed in it. See what I'm saying? These, these things what they're artificially making, stay away from, you know? Whether it's through the size aquaponics or whatever, it's not natural, yeah, it's not, it's not natural, it's not real. Leave it alone. Just to start, um, okay, and starting, you got things like Dr. Sabi, Dr. Lele Africa, because when you're starting, a lot of people got to make that transition. So in transitioning, you got to go slowly at this, you follow? Uh, a good one is vegetarians versus dead flesh eaters. 
and that's by Dr. Layla O. Africa and Dr. Scott Whitaker. Also, you have things like melanin nutrition. Dr. Sabi goes without saying. You follow? And, and, and the best one, if people who are still consuming dead flesh and dairy, then the number one DVD I recommend to them is obviously Urban Kryptonite. No two ways about it. Urban Kryptonite is like the hidden colors of health and nutrition, period. And remember, it's not just the food substances, it's dirty diseases, electronic gadgets, like the great Dr. Delba Blair, who's now an ancestor, he came to teach us when he was on this plane. You follow? Weather wars, Delba Blair again. You follow? Where you have weather um, manipulation. You know, because certain countries do manipulate the weather, that's real. You know, just study your skyscrapers, study something called the Heart Project. You follow what I'm saying? And how they manipulate the clouds and the weather above the ionosphere. And how that affects land growth, everything, you know? How it affects you, your moods. You follow what I'm saying? So, you know, we gotta tie all that all in together. Everything intertwines. You're taught go to university, you sign four years of your whole life away for one ass degree. One degree? Yo, you should be coming out here kicking 360 on a side though. You follow? And then also they intertwine because everything does intertwine. You wouldn't understand metaphysics unless you understood the health and nutrition thing anyway. You dig me? So everything, everything intertwines, everything has a correlation. So yeah, with a food recommendation, and that's what that's what people do, they try to interrupt. When they, they see you building a cipher, it's an energy thing. And because they're not tuned into it, they just boom, they come and crush it down. It's like the size of the sidewalk. This sidewalk is big. You could be walking down the street and somebody will come walk right in your path. And you're like, why did they do that? You know what I'm saying? Because their, their, their body is off key. They're off key. They're not tuned into the planet's magnetic grid. You follow what I'm saying? You have an electromagnetic field also. And you don't want to compromise the integrity over there. You know, so you don't want to be putting cell phones in the air every minute and sleeping with charger on and da da da. You know, we've been bombarded with Blu rays. That's one good thing that um, Dr. Delbert Blair, when he was on this plane, he taught us about, you know, the dirty electricity gadgets, the, the metallic bed frames that end up frying your spine as you're sleeping. We should have wooden bed frames. And, Things of that nature, you know, cut the electricity when you're sleeping. I cut everything else off when I'm sleeping. Just cut it all off. Boom. You know, I ain't got that steak or lamb chop in my fridge. Why? Because I don't eat anything with fish and ass on it. So I ain't got much to worry about, you dig me? So get that water intake every day. That's the first thing you should start doing when you wake up upon waking it is water. Water. There's a science behind the water. Water is so unique. Water's water and hydrogen. You gotta study hydrogen. Hydrogen. The, the, the hydrogen is the, the atom principle. You have to study that. There's nothing could exist without it. Which really makes hydrogen the god of everything. And I'm saying god, not in its colloquial sense, because I'm not religious, you follow? Because before religion, we had something called African spirituality. So, you know, we need to get back to that. Where you feel what's going on. You feel, if you're in tune with nature, you feel things going on. Like, you check out the animal kingdom, of which we are still a part, um, the animal kingdom goes somewhere like Japan, a town called Napao or something. You know, a, a cow might sit down on the road. Boom! They, they, they. From that alone, they didn't know the storm was coming. You know what I'm saying? Animals are in tune. Why aren't you in tune no more? You know, we should be in tune. We really should be in tune. You should, you should feel what these things going on. You follow what I'm saying? It's, it's funny because some of my friends when they come here at my table, like, yo, Brooke, I don't know what to eat today. I'm like, when you say to yourself, you don't know what to eat today, that's your real self telling you. You ain't meant to eat. That's what it is. You're like, yo, I, I just don't know what to eat. I just don't know. I don't know why I, I don't know why I fancy. I don't know what to eat. Don't eat. Just don't eat. That's the time to study more time, you follow what I'm saying? Because you don't need to be eating every single day. Especially solids, you know, it doesn't make sense. You follow? We gotta get that clear for back into our system. You know, learn how the plants do. As I said, like learn your symbiotic relationship with Mother Nature, you follow? Um, the plant, how do the plants get the energy? You know, a science called what? Photosynthesizing, right? But we do the complete opposite, this is photovoltaism. So, learn your symbiotic relationship with the plants. Don't eat foods that are made in a plant or produced in a plant, as in a factory plant. Plant life food, yes. Like grow your food, boom. That's real, real food, real food that has meaning, that has volume, that has, you know, all the things good to you. Get that CMOS, baby. <laughs> get, those, get that vitality going on. No, my friend, you interrupted me before. Goodbye. So this is what they do. Goodbye. This is what they do, right? They try to interrupt you. That's very rude. Pause it. Pause it. Can you pause it? Yeah, let me pause it now. Because that's just too rude.
And this is my teaching modality, you follow what I'm saying? As I said, vending is, is as old as, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, you can holler at me by phone, that's 07-930-262-124, Brooklyn Keck New Bar. Uh, also on YouTube, The Home Tree Stamp, on Facebook, The Home Tree Stamp. Um, and as I said, this is my teaching modality, my table, bring out up. I'm here like more or less every day, all day, every day, you follow? Because I like to reach everyday people in everyday places from everyday races and everyday faces, you follow what I'm saying? And that's the street, you know, you can't really beat that. You follow what I'm saying? A lot of people like to hide behind this and that. And nah, I, I, like, I like the interactiveness, you know, that one-on-one. -on -one. We get that rapport and, you know, you can, you can help people really get there and be questioned on the spot and not hide and, you know, sound deep. I ain't nothing deep. We're light beings having a physical experience upon this plane. Seven Sisters is a location uptown, baby. And a big shout out to my, to my, my brothers, my peers, um, which is Black Child Promotions, you dig? But sometimes you may see us here in Seven Sisters on the south side of the Thames River, London, in Brixton. But we all over this, baby. Come and holler, you follow? Get these books, get these DVDs, get these body fragrances. Yo, these natural fragrances, that Egyptian musk, that frankincense, you follow? With no alcohol and no moody chemicals that's gonna burn up your skin like them Arabs, you dig me? You know, you see what's happening in Libya, I'm not best pleased. Yeah, come check out this. Everyone should know about Henrietta Lacks. Heal ourselves, you dig? True story, baby. Forget Amazon. Come, come and support your boy right here. You dig me? Come and support your boy right there, man. But, you know, I deal with everybody's knowledge. I don't just deal with one particular train. As I said, everything intertwined. So, whether you're Nawapium, 5% or Rastafarian, 7 day, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Hebrew is like, we, five, we all want. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all one, really, so, you know, no one should be egotistical saying, well, their thing is, is the truth and whatnot. You devise that on your own. You come to your own conclusions, you follow what I'm saying? So, you know, right now, the number one thing should be the health thing. It's the one thing we all got in common, you follow what I'm saying? All these stores in certain neighborhoods, like, why is that? Like, come on, man, you know? Y'all do the math. Come on, holler at your boy. Consistency, I am your remedy. 